What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Week 3 Commission Report. I am Jamie Comrie here, and I'm reporting on my league, the League of Shiva. Um, week 3 was a pretty interesting week, I will say that. Of course, I just told my cat to get down and try to give him a toy to play with, but of course, he has to jump up on the table here, but that's, that's a different story for a different day. Um, I will say this. Very interesting week three. Um, it came down really to Monday night for most of the matchups. Um, and most of the matchups in this week wound up being something that could possibly be... Uh, every matchup could have been a poop matchup of the week. Um, but I will get to what I feel was the poop matchup of the week shortly. Uh, first, I'm going to start off by saying that in my last episode, I was mentioning that this week, the Battle of the Undefeateds, uh, TG Timmy Gear and his team, the Some Things You Can't Unsee Bros, and uh, battled against Chris, uh, the Revis and Butthead team. Um, and I thought it was going to be a close matchup. It, it looked like it was panning out to be one of the best matchups of the week on paper. But then, uh, uh, you know, on the heels of Drew Brees and um, other. Uh, players as well. TG winds up slaughtering Chris 150 to 71. So he gets blown out by TG and goes to 2 and 1. And uh, TG now 3 and 0 oh after that big victory. And um, so what I thought was going, going to be the best game of the week and closest game of the week wound up being uh, the biggest blowout of the week. Uh, the game was decided on Sunday by 8 p.m., so by the time the Sunday night game started and the Monday night, way before the Monday night game, that game was in the books. Um, the game of the week I'm picking is going to be, uh, or was, the Binghamtons against the uh, Mile High Social Club. That's John versus uh, Dan. And it was uh, Binghamton's first win of the season. Um, and he just slipped by him on Monday night. It came down to Monday night, and that's kind of the theme about this week is Monday night's game, which was Denver and, um, oh, God, who did they play? Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. They played Oakland, of course. They played Oakland in Denver, and now Denver is 3-0, and oh, and I'm telling you right now, freaking cat, I'm telling you, um, the... Denver Broncos are the team to beat right now. I mean, they are just incredible. They've put up 100 and some odd points, 145, I think, points uh, in three weeks. Um, they moved to 3-0. and oh. It seems as though nobody's going to beat that team. So I am feeling pretty lucky that I have uh, uh, Peyton Manning, the Denver Broncos defense, and um, also Julius Thomas. So I double dip on any throws to Julius Thomas. And that's a third of my lineup. A third of my lineup is the Denver Broncos. So come week, I think nine is their bye week. I'm going to be uh, in a little bit of a pickle, but that's for another day as well. But um, the reason why I'm calling that the, the uh, game of the week, the Binghamtons and the Mile High Social Club, is that it was, uh, he was, Binghamton was down by four points going into Monday night. And I actually texted uh, John, my brother, on Sunday night, um, saying, man, if no Sean, oh, not no Sean, I'm sorry. Um, if Demarius Thomas doesn't poop his pants, then you'll be all set. And he's like, oh man, I got to knock on wood and I can't, you know, I, th now you just jinxed me, blah, blah, blah. Well, it, it turned out that he got more than the four points needed. Um, going into halftime, it was actually, um, the matchup was tied up, which John would have won on a tie because quarterbacks, um, the quarterback matchup is what decides a tie. So um, Binghamton, with that win, moves up four spots in the power rankings um, into sixth position, which is actually just barely into the playoff hunt. Um, the top six teams out of ten in this league uh, go on to the playoffs, and then the, the remaining four are in the consolation bracket. So uh, he really helped himself out a lot by picking up that win, and we'll look at the um, rankings in just a little bit. There um, are still two undefeated teams in the league, however, at 3-0. and uh, TG Timmy Gear, as I, I mentioned, um, the Some Things You Can't Unsee Bros. And then the New Hampshire Mad Men, um, coached by Dave. Um, Dave plays Chris next week, um, the Revis and Butthead team. And Timmy plays the poor Hump Day Camels, which, man, that's going to be undefeated at winless. Yes, the Hump Day Camels, unfortunately, did not pick up a win. And now they're 0-3, as are the Nocho Cinco's, which... 
I beat 118 to 84, taking out my mother. I know, I feel bad. It's my mother. But at the same time, it's fantasy football, so it is what it is. Uh, so I took the win in my matchup against my mother. And now I'm in a three-way tie for second place in my division with Chris and Jeff. Um, my mother and my girlfriend, as I mentioned, are both the only winless teams in the league. Um, my game also came down to Monday night. Now, as I said, I have you know a third of my lineup are um, Denver Broncos. So I actually wound up with 47 points on Monday night. I won the matchup 118 to 84, but it looked like it was going to be a little bit more lopsided than that. Um, when the when the game actually started, because um, I was only I, I only had like a four point lead going to that game, and all she had left to go was Matt Prater, the kicker for the um, Broncos. He got her seventeen points and um, actually outscored both Julius Thomas and the Broncos defense, which were on my team. Um, so that was kind of scary, but luckily I have Peyton Manning, who is just lights out when it comes to. Um, fantasy uh, points and boy let me just tell you right now I'm wearing my New England Patriots shirt right now and my little New England Patriots clip on my hat right here and um, I, you know I, I am absolutely a New England Patriots fan but the Denver Broncos are the team to beat and I don't see any other team beating them um, all the way up to the AFC championship game I think it's probably going to be maybe the Patriots and the Broncos in the AFC Championship, but I think the Broncos take that and wind up going and playing Seattle in the Super Bowl. That's my prediction for the year. So be it. Um, but yeah, so the game of the week I thought was definitely um, was definitely the Mile High Social Club and the uh, Binghamtons. But another game that or another matchup that could have been a game of the week, or maybe even is tied for game of the week, is Dave and Doug, the uh, New Hampshire Madman against the Doug Tatership. Um, going into Monday night, another matchup that came down to Monday night, um, he had uh, Doug had a 16-point deficit to overcome, and he was the only one with a player in that game, and it was no Sean Moreno. Now, with Denver having three running backs, no Sean Moreno, kind of tough. He only wound up with three points. So Dave winds up taking that matchup, 85 to 72. So ultimately, the poop matchup really is not, there's no poop matchups. There's only poop teams. And there's two teams, and that would be the Hump Day Camels and the Revis and Buttheads. That's right. I'm going back to that first game that I mentioned right off the top. Um, TG Timmy Gear with his something you can't unsee bros beating the Revis and Buttheads 150 to 71. That's my poop matchup of the week if you really want to call call one out. Um, just a couple of teams that got the poop kicked out of them this week. The Hump Day Camels only got 65 points um, and would have lost to everybody in the league. However, Revis and Butthead leaving 100 points on his bench. 100 points! Um, and he has Tony Romo. He left him on the bench. He got 26 points this week. Um, he has the Bears defense, which uh, they played Sunday night against Pittsburgh and slaughtered them 40-23. to 23. Um, And they, they put up 25 points as a defense. Denarius Moore last night put up 25 points. And then D'Angelo Williams, 17 points, all on his bench. Um, and he gave up his status as undefeated. So I, I'm going to call him the poop of the week or the sacko of the week. Um, and that's really what it comes down to. Now, a quick note about the NFL. Can you guys believe this? The Giants suck, the Steelers suck, and the Redskins suck. Three teams that should be on the top of their league, uh, in the top of the league. Uh, the Giants lose 38 to nothing to Carolina on Sunday. That is just, that's ridiculous. That's the poop matchup right there. Carolina should have been slaughtered by the Giants, but no, they blank the New York Giants. The Giants taking their first goose egg in a game in like 40 years or something like that. Steelers on Sunday night, I mentioned, lose 40-23 to to the Bears. And then the Redskins lose to the Lions, 27-20 to on Sunday. That's unheard of. Lions, Panthers, and Bears, oh my. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. I, just, I really can't believe it. So, anyhow, um, previewing the next week for um, games. I, I think I mentioned all the games. I'll run them down real quick from week three. Once again, Big Fat 77 stake out the Nocho Cinco's 118 to 84. Uh, in a close matchup, the New Hampshire Madmen take out the Doug Tatorship 85 to 72. And then um, 
not in so such of a close matchup. The Philly cheesesteaks, um, managed by Jeff, take out the Hump Day Camels, 103 to 65. And the Some Things You Can't Unsee Bros, walloping the Reavers and Buttheads, 150 to 71. Um, Timmy would have beaten everybody in the league. And then wrapping up the, the, in week three, Binghamton sliding past the Mile High Social Club, 84 to 79. Now, previewing next week. Mostly division matchups. Uh, there's one non-division matchup, and that would be the Philly Cheesesteaks at two and one facing the Mile High Social Club at one and two. That could be potentially the poop matchup of the week. My other pick for the potential of a poop matchup next week in week four would be um, the division game in Shiva North, the Doug Tatership at Nocho Cinco. Right now, they both teams are only at about 86 to 88 points projected. Um, Doug Tatership at 1-2, and two, Nocho Cinco at 0-3. Oh um, the potential upset of the week that I'm going to call out, I'm rooting for them. I'm rooting for the 0-3s oh in this week. I think the Hump Day Camels beat the Some Things You Can't Unsee Bros and take her first win of the week. Uh, of course, she's at 0-3 and, and Timmy at 3-0. and That could be potentially the upset of the week, and that's a division game as well. Um, also a division game in the North, 3-0 and New Hampshire Mad Men take on the 2-1 and Rebus and Butthead. That should be a decent matchup. And then uh, wrapping up the week would be my game, which I think potentially ha- has the potential to be the best game of the week, uh, would be the Big Fat 77s at 2-1 and one versus the Binghamtons, who just picked up their first victory of the year. Uh, right now, we are slated at 131 to 113 in favor of me. So, John, you might be my next victim, my friend. And uh, sorry, but um, you're going down as well. So that's going to do it for week three. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to put up the standings um, as of the end of week three, and that's going to do it here for week three's commish report. I'm Jamie Comrie signing off, and make sure you tune in next week to see if any of my predictions pay off. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Here come the um, standings right now. The standings as they look like after week three. New Hampshire Mad Men and some things you can't unsee, bros, still undefeated, and our division leaders at 3-0. and a three-way tie for second place in the Shiva North with the Big Fat 77s, Revis and Butthead, and the Philly Cheesesteaks. And then Binghamton rounding out that division at 1-2, and two, um, but moving all the way up to sixth place overall in the league. Um, and then also a two-way tie for 1-2 and two with the Mile High Social Club and Doug, Tater- Doug Tatership. And the poor winless teams, Hump Day Camels and the Nocho Cinco's at 0-3.